Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson, we learn how to create a few frequently used materials uh, in Corona, materials like plastic, wood, concrete, and metals. We have already created different subsurface scattering and glass-based materials, so we don't need to cover them in this lesson again. If you open up the Corona material library, here you have access to hundreds of Corona materials and simply by right-clicking on them, you can assign them to your geometries and start studying them in the material editor. And this is probably your best resource in learning how to approach creating different materials in Corona. And for this exact reason, I won't be making this lesson too long, just covering some of the basic materials. Let's open up the material editor and start with a basic plastic shader. Now create a new Corona material and assign it to the shader ball. Now run the interactive rendering. For a plastic shader like uh, wood or concrete, diffuse color or diffuse texture is the most important and dominating component. And for plastic, it's normally a simple color. Let's go for a yellowish diffuse color with the RGB values of 210. 121 and finally 9. As I mentioned in the reflection video a few lessons back, in Corona you can set the reflection level to 1 in almost all cases for opaque materials and uh, Fresnel IOR as I mentioned for most opaque surfaces can be set to 1.5 to 1.6, 1.7. Let's use 1.6 here. And as we learned, reflection glossiness is the only parameter that needs to be customized per material, depending on how matte or shiny the plastic reference that you want to create is, reflection glossiness can vary. We can probably use something like 0.8 in this case. To make the surface more realistic, we do need to use a reflection glossiness map. In the project files for this course, I have provided a lot of black and white grunge or dirt maps. In this case, let's load this BW38 map. We can connect it directly to the reflection glossiness input of the material and then start adjusting it until we get what we want. Uh, but uh, for you know future controls and if you, in case we wanted to actually uh, use this texture at its raw mode uh, to control other parameters, uh, we can in fact go ahead uh, and connect it to an output map and then connect the out output map to the reflection glassiness input. And this way, if for example, uh, if I wanted to kind of do some adjustment on this texture, I still have the original version that I can use it for other purposes. So let's uh, connect this map to the output and connect the output map to the reflection glassiness input. If I stop the render and uh, show this BW38 map in the viewport, you notice the tiling is just too much on the surface. So let's set the tiling to 0.25 and 0.25 on U and V. And start the render again. I think the map is just a bit too rough. So in the output map, make the darker values a bit brighter, about 25% brighter. So now the surface is less rough because the map we are using is having brighter values compared to before. So imagine the reflection glossiness map is from zero to one. Zero, which kind of equals dark values, makes the surface to be very rough and one uh, which equals bright values make the surface very shiny. So we can actually uh, control these values in the map to get exactly what we want. Let's connect the output map to our bump as well and set the bump amount to 
And the last thing would be to add some subsurface scattering to make the plastic come alive. Let's set the subsurface scattering mode to SSS. Set the amount to one and radius to five centimeters. And this radius value is uh, really depends on your scene, the size of the geometry that you want to apply the plastic material to. Uh, but in this case, probably five would be enough. And I'm gonna copy the diffuse color to the scatter color and just make it less saturated. Probably set the saturation to about um, 215. I'm just gonna set the highlight compression to three and contrast to 2.5. And this is what we get. Let me just um, stop the render and show you a cleaner and high resolution final render of this shader. And here is our nice realistic uh, plastic shader. And if we want, we can simply create a green plastic shader by adjusting diffuse and scatter color. So let me duplicate the shader by shift dragging and assign it to the shader ball. change the diffuse color to this green color with the RGB values of 12, 86, and six. And a lighter, less saturated green color with the RGB values of 37, 172, and 26. And if we render our scene with this uh, shader, show you the final render with this shader which is high resolution and clean you can see you get this really nice and realistic plastic shader as i mentioned we can probably use a lower radius value something like three four maybe the subsurface scattering is just a bit too out there but um, it's really your personal choice Next, let's create a wood or better to say a parquet shader. Um, I'm going to create a new Corona material and assign it to the shader ball and run the interactive rendering. Uh, load this texture called wood underscore parquet dot PNG and connect it to the diffuse color. As you can see from the render, the tiling um, is a bit too repetitive. So we can set it to something like 0.25 and 0.25 to get a bit more reasonable size. I'm gonna set the uh, reflection level to one. Fresnel IR in the vicinity of 1.5 or 1.6 or a bit higher. Let's try 1.65 just to get a bit more equal reflectivity on the entire surface. And I'm going to duplicate the diffuse map and load this map called wood underscore parquet underscore bw underscore zero two and connect it to the our connected to a corona color correct map because we want to do just slight color correction on it and in case you want to obviously use this map for other inputs as well and connect the color correct map to the reflection glassiness input of the material. As you can see in the render, I guess there is just too much contrast in the reflection glassiness map and I want the brighter and darker values to be in a closer range together. So let's decrease the contrast in the color correct map to around 0.45. And to make the reflections a bit rougher, Let's darken the map a bit by setting the brightness to 0 0.05, just a tad. Now we're gonna get a rougher surface. Now we can connect the original map to the bump input and set the bump amount to 0.2. If you remember when we we're discussing displacement mapping and bump mapping, uh, these are the cases that bump mapping is extremely useful. It's much faster and it gives you perfect results. We can just set the highlight compression to the default one and set the contrast to something like 1.5. If 
And here is our parquet shader. Let me just show you the higher resolution render as well. So here is our beautiful, touchable, easy to make realistic parquet shader. Onto a concrete shader, which is very similar to the wood shader. So create a new Corona material and assign it to the shader ball and run the interactive rendering. Load this concrete underscore zero one underscore D and uh, connect it to the diffuse map input. Set the reflection level to one. Brunel IR to 1.7 maybe in this case. We can set the reflection glassiness to about 0.5 before connecting a map to it. Connect the map to a Corona color correct map and um, decrease the gamma to around uh, 0.88 to add a bit more contrast to the map and you can now connect the corona color correct map to the reflection glassiness input obviously you can adjust the map and make it brighter to get a shinier concrete or make the map darker to get a diffuser concrete shader which normally uh, is the latter case Connect the original map to the bump input and set the bump amount to around 0.3 and uh, let's see what we get. Just uh, going to increase the contrast to something like 2 and uh, let me show you the higher resolution render as well. Here is our concrete shader really nice you can see how easier the process is in corona you don't need to look for the exact fresnel wall you and kind of uh, try to find out which fresnel wall you makes the process much easier if it's an opaque surface like wood like concrete like plastic uh, just to use something in between 1.5 to 1.7 1.6 and uh, you're gonna be good to go. Just try to find the right texture for your diffuse and reflection glassiness. And finally, some metal shaders. I'm gonna create a new Corona material and assign it to the geometry. Um, start the render, obviously. Start with something like uh, maybe Chrome or... Uh, for metals, you don't have any diffuse or it's very very dark so set it to something like zero set the reflection level to one and fresnel ior to 999 in the frame buffer set the highlight compression to about two um, we can probably just decrease the reflection glassiness to something like 0.8 And this is your basic metal shader. And obviously, if you want it to be shinier, simply uh, set the reflection glassiness value to something closer to one. Now, if we want to add some smudges, scratches, fingerprints, and stuff like that, we can connect a map to the reflection glassiness. Uh, load this map called BW1. Set the tiling to 0.25 and 0.25 and connect it to the reflection glossiness. Now we get this very rough metal surface. Now I'm gonna increase the dark values to around 0.7. Now those dark pixels get brighter and we're gonna have a less rough surface. And I want to decrease the bright values to around uh, something like uh, 0.925 so the brighter pixels will become a tad darker 
and therefore the shinier parts of the shader will be a bit rougher. Let's increase the highlight compression to about three. I think it's a very shiny reflective metal surface, so you get those very, very bright highlights. Connect the reflection glassiness map to the bump input as well. And set the bump amount to a very, very low value like 0 0.02 or 0 0.01. And that's our basic metal shader. Now, if I wanted to make a gold material out of this, I just need to adjust the reflection color. So duplicate the shader and assign it. And now set the reflection color to a fairly desaturated yellowish color with the RGB values of 255, 198, and 76. And here is our gold shader. For something like copper, um, you know, duplicate the shader and assign it again. And this time, uh, change the reflection color to a desaturated orange with the RGB values of something like 255, 111, and 76. And here is our um, kind of copper shader. Obviously, you can adjust the color and make it less or more saturated or uh, you know, adjust the hue attack to get closer to what you're exactly looking at but this is the gist of what you need to do. Let me now show you the higher resolution renders of these metal shaders as well. So here is the chrome, the gold, and the copper. Really nice and realistic. I think it's enough for this lesson and uh, for the corona material in general. See you in the next lesson to learn about another Corona material. See you there. Thanks for watching this free video tutorial, which is a free sample from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Corona for 3ds Max. It is a massive 9 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Corona for 3ds Max thoroughly. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.